In the first lesson on the gerund, we look mainly at its function as the subject, complement or object of a clause. This time we will start by looking at adjectives, nouns and prepositions that are followed by gerunds as their complements. We will then introduce cantative verbs. And the rest of the lesson will be an answer to the question, what is so difficult about the gerund? Let's start with a small group of adjectives that can be followed directly by the present participle form of a verb. Not all grammarians would classify this ing form as a gerund. In fact, in the first lesson, we saw that many grammarians do not use the term gerund at all. But learners often have questions about such adjective plus ing combinations, so it's useful to cover them here. The adjectives that can be followed directly by the ing form are mostly common opinion and emotion adjectives. Here are some examples. It was great talking to you. It is interesting watching one's child learn to walk. I feel nervous walking home in the dark. He feels good helping people learn English. It's wonderful living near the sea. She is happiest staying in and watching old movies. It's impolite talking with your mouth full. Now let's turn to a larger group of adjectives that are also followed by an ing verb form, but not directly. Between the adjective and the gerund is a preposition. Here are just a few of them in exemplifying sentences. For example, I'm worried about getting COVID. He's not capable of running the country. She is disappointed with being overlooked for the position. A few nouns can behave in the same way as some adjectives, in that they can be followed directly by an ing form. Here are examples with the ing forms highlighted. I have a problem getting up early. It was a mistake letting him drive my car. There is no point waiting any longer. We had a lot of luck finding a seat. You made an error correcting your writing. And many more nouns can be followed by a preposition plus a gerund. Here are sentences with nouns of this type. For example, they are in the process of painting their house. His addiction to gambling is affecting the whole family. There was a delay in unloading the plane. I'm not in the habit of using my phone in public. Standalone prepositions are those that are not part of a noun, adjective or verb phrase. Common standalone prepositions are in, on, at, for, from, etc. Some such prepositions can be followed by a gerund complement. For example, in doing that, you have made yourself look foolish. She walked out without saying goodbye. He parted instead of studying for the test. By refusing to deal with the problem, you made it worse. The next part of speech that is followed directly by gerund is the catenative verb. In the examples on the slide, the catenative verb is shown in red and the gerund in green. So by now you may be thinking, what is so difficult about the gerund? It's simply the ing form of a verb, which is used everywhere that nouns can be used, and as complements of various adjectives, nouns, prepositions and verbs. Even gerund phrases such as bossing others around or passing your driving test are easy to understand and construct as they follow the usual word order for statements. Well, it is true that the gerund in itself is not difficult, but the main problem is that you cannot guarantee that any given catenative verb can be followed by a gerund. In fact, many catenative verbs are followed by a to infinitive, not a gerund. Here are several sentences containing such verbs. Two examples are, I refuse to answer that question, and my grandmother plans to visit Germany soon. The same is true for adjectives. Some are followed by a gerund, as we've seen above, but others are followed by to plus the infinitive. Here are examples of such two infinitive adjectives. I was afraid to say what I thought. She is certain to pass the test. He is always eager to help. They were very lucky to avoid getting injured. 
Okay, so far so good, you might say. Just learn those words that are followed by gerunds and those that are followed by two plus an infinitive. Unfortunately, it's not quite so easy because some verbs and some adjectives can be followed by both alternatives. In verbs, for example, I like reading and I like to read. And in adjectives, I'm happy spending time alone and I'm happy to spend time alone. Furthermore, there is often a semantic difference between the two alternatives. For example, I like to dance is clear. I like dancing, on the other hand, can mean both I like to dance and I like the act or art of dancing, whoever does it. Similarly, I'm happy to help you means something like I'm willing to help you. On the other hand, I'm happy helping you can mean I feel happy when I'm helping you. And indeed, there are some verbs where there is a significant difference in meaning between the two alternative forms. So whereas he started eating and he started to eat mean the same, he stopped eating and he stopped to eat do not. The first is clear and the second means he stopped doing whatever he was doing, for example hiking, in order to eat. Another catenative verb with two possible continuations with different meanings is the verb to try. Imagine that you are having difficulty sleeping. Your doctor might use the gerund form and say, try drinking a cup of hot milk before bed. Try plus a gerund in this context means something like, see if drinking a cup of hot milk solves your sleeping problem. On the other hand, if your doctor says, try to drink less alcohol, she means make an effort to drink less alcohol. Finally, we should note that synonyms do not always behave in the same way. So a synonym for like is enjoy. You can say both I like singing and I like to sing. But you can only say I enjoy singing, not I enjoy to sing. Similarly, you can say I hate singing and I hate to sing. But you can only detest singing, not detest to sing. Another difficulty is that the preposition to is sometimes followed by a gerund and not by the expected infinitive. This applies to both verbs and adjectives. For example, in verbs, I look forward to hearing from you. He admitted to being unkind. I object to killing animals for food. And in adjectives, I'm not used to getting up early. She is addicted to playing video games. He is committed to improving his English. A further difficulty is that some catenative verbs are followed not by a gerund or by a to infinitive, but by a bare infinitive. A bare infinitive is an infinitive that is not preceded by the word to. Most of these are the verbs of perception. For example, I watched him play chess and she felt a spider crawl down her leg. But here too there is a complication, namely that the gerund form is also possible after such verbs with no difference in meaning in most contexts. For example, I watched him playing chess and she felt a spider crawling down her leg. However, in some contexts a distinction can be made. An example is the alternative gerund, bare infinitive choices, in the following sentences. I saw her crossing the bridge, and I saw her cross the bridge. The first sentence could imply that you only saw her in the process of crossing the bridge, but not necessarily getting to the other end. The second sentence implies that you did see her get to the other end of the bridge. Quiz page. Pause the video if you want to review the questions and answers before continuing. It should now be clear that this aspect of English grammar is indeed problematic. So what is the advice for the language learner? Well, basically, you need to know how to find out the grammar of any given catenative verb, adjective, noun or preposition that you wish to use. To do this, you have five possibilities. 
The first is to ask a native speaker. Most will not be able to use grammatical terminology, but they will usually give you the right answer. The other four possibilities are use a dictionary, do an n-gram comparison, do an online comparative search, and apply a simple rule as a final resort. Using a dictionary is probably the easiest and most reliable way to determine the grammar of any given word. This screenshot shows the Collings co-build entry for the verb deny. The highlighted grammar information shows that it is a verb that is followed by an ing verb. The highlighted example sentence contains the gerund ever having seen her. This first screenshot from the Cambridge Dictionary entry for deny has the same grammar information and the example sentence contains the gerund breaking the window. The second Cambridge Dictionary screenshot has an example sentence showing that the adjective opposed is followed by the preposition to and a gerund. In this case, my learning to drive. An engram allows you to compare the usage in books of two or more phrases. Imagine that you're not sure whether you need a gerund or a to infinitive after the catenative verb to learn. Here is an engram comparing the two possible verb forms, learn driving and learn to drive. It is clear that the to infinitive is the correct choice. Here is another engram, this time comparing the two potential alternatives, shocked to hear the news and shocked hearing the news. Again, the correct choice is obvious. The highlighted text reads, engrams not found, shocked hearing the news. Another way to make an informed choice on the correct or best form to use is to do an online search. For example, here are screenshots of two searches. The first is on I'm looking forward to visit my parents and the second on I'm looking forward to visiting my parents. Comparing the number of results makes it clear that the gerund is the correct choice in this case. If you use this method, be aware that the internet is full of questions from English learners asking whether a particular complement type, i.e. the gerund or to infinitive, is correct. It is a good idea to check the summary text and possibly open the page if it seems relevant. For example, see the summary text of the first result under the search for the incorrect I'm looking forward to visit. Finally, you can apply a simple text. This is to ask yourself, is the catenative verb, for example, referring to an action in progress or a present state? Or is it referring to an action or state in the future? If the verb is the former, then use a gerund complement. If it is the latter, use a to infinitive complement. Here are examples that refer to an action in progress or a present state and use a gerund. I miss having my children at home. I loathe going to the hairdresser. She avoids walking home in the dark. I'm considering buying a new car. And here are examples that refer to a future action or state and use a to infinitive. She promised to lend me the money. I expect to pass the test. He agreed to work late. They decided to move house. This test will not always give you the correct or only answer. So in general, you will probably want to be sure of the grammar of the verb by using one of the other three methods discussed above. But in a context where these methods are not available, for example, in an exam, this test might be helpful in making the right choice. The final advice is to learn new words with simple sentences exemplifying their grammar. Many learners learn only a translation. So if you are a German, for example, you learn that beschuldigen is to accuse. Of course, this is a good start, but it tells you nothing about the complementation of the verb, i.e. its grammar. The exemplifying sentence, my sister accused me of using her phone, on the other hand, tells you that accused takes a direct object and is followed by the preposition of, which has a gerund complement. Here are two more examples. 
Leugnen equals deny. I denied using my sister's phone, a gerund compliment. And erlauben equals allow. My sister allowed me to use her phone, a direct object followed by a two infinitive complement. If you use this learning method and personalize the example sentences where possible, you will not only have a better chance of remembering the word, but you will also have a good basis for knowing how to use the word in a different context. Note, the text on the slide is taken from the abstract of a research study into vocabulary learning with the title, Do Example Sentences Work in Direct Vocabulary Learning? Quiz page. Pause the video if you want to review the questions and answers before continuing. OK, we've come to the end of this lesson on the gerund and the two infinitive. Here is the important information in summary. In the description below this video, you will find a link to the lesson index page shown on the left. As you can see, there are four ways to access the content, as well as a glossary and links to quizzes and more information on the topic.